In today's video, I'll be talking about COVID-19 and how to determine how severe the outbreak is in any particular county in the United States, including yours and mine. In several of my previous videos, I've told you all sorts of great things about the new house that my wife and I will be moving into this September. Today, I'm going to tell you one bad thing about our move. It turns out that the outbreak where I'm moving to is far more severe than the outbreak is here at my current house. I'll show you how I know that and teach you how to look up the statistics for your area. But before we get into the specifics of all that, let's first talk about how to analyze COVID-19 numbers. Imagine that City A has had 100,000 total cases of COVID-19 and City B has had 500,000 total cases. In which town would you say the outbreak is currently worse? Well, the answer is we don't have enough information yet to be able to determine in which city the outbreak is currently worse. The 100,000 number for City A is the total number of cases since the outbreak began, not the number of new cases currently being found. Just because the total number for City B is five times more than the total for City A, it doesn't necessarily mean that the number of current cases is less in City A. Maybe the majority of the cases in City B occurred very early on in the pandemic, and things have vastly improved since then. This is the case in the state of New York, for example. They had a huge outbreak in April, giving them the largest total number of COVID-19 cases of all 50 states, but their big outbreak was four months ago. For the last month or so, they've never had more than a thousand new cases in the entire state on any given day. So this is one of several key concepts you need to understand. You can't make a fair assessment of the current situation in any given place by looking at the statistics for total number of cases. To judge the current situation, you have to look at the daily numbers of new cases. But there's another problem that comes up when you compare daily numbers of new cases. Let me illustrate it like this. Let's say hypothetically that Arizona reported 4,000 new cases of COVID-19 yesterday and that California reported 8,000 new cases yesterday. Which place would you say has the more severe or more dangerous outbreak? If you said California, you're wrong. Sure, it had twice as many daily cases in this hypothetical example, but California has a population of 39 million people, and Arizona only has a population of 7 million people. So Arizona has about 18% as many residents as California, but had 50% as many new daily cases in this hypothetical example. So this is another key point to understand. To get the true picture of the severity of a COVID-19 outbreak in any particular place, you have to look at the number of daily cases per capita, or in other words, per the number of residents of that area. The way that scientists like to do this is by expressing the number of new cases per 100,000 residents of that place. So in our hypothetical example, California had new daily cases in 20.5% of every 100,000 people, but Arizona had new daily cases in 57.1% of every 100,000 people. So you can see that in our hypothetical example, the outbreak in Arizona is much more severe than in California. Now, I promise you I'm going to take this out of the hypothetical and start using real numbers in just a minute or two so you can really see what's going on across the country right now. And I'm also going to stop looking at statewide numbers and start looking at much more useful numbers in just a minute, and that is the number of cases in any given county, not in a state. Because it almost doesn't matter how many cases of COVID-19 are occurring in your state right now. What's critical to know is how many cases are occurring in your county. Because those are the people that are really all around you. They're close enough to spread the virus to you if you're standing in line behind them at Walmart or sitting next to each other having drinks at a bar. But before we start looking at the real numbers at a countywide level, there's one other key concept I have to make sure you understand. This is the last one, and after this, we'll be diving into real numbers. The final key concept is that the number of new daily cases can fluctuate quite a bit from day to day. So we should always look at a seven-day rolling average of the number of new cases in any given place. 
Let me illustrate that by looking at the real day-to-day -day numbers here in the county that I live in now, San Luis Obispo County, California. Looking at this chart of daily new cases here in San Luis Obispo County, seven days ago there were 70 new cases reported. Six days ago it was 16 new cases. Five days ago it was 15. Four days ago it was 72. Three days ago it was 34. Two days ago it was 46. And yesterday there were 55 new cases. So if we were to just say that the most recent statistics show 55 new cases per day, that would really paint a false picture because these numbers will always fluctuate up and down over a week's period of time. The weekend makes a big difference in the numbers. If a holiday falls during the period, that has a huge effect. And in some cases, even the weather makes a difference. For example, if you live in Texas and it's 110 degrees today, but it's forecast to be only 80 degrees tomorrow, which day are you going to go sit in your car for one of those drive through COVID-19 tests? So the point is, when looking at daily case numbers, always use a seven-day rolling average. In the case of those numbers I showed you for San Luis Obispo County, the seven-day rolling average was 44 cases. So even though the most current statistic, yesterday's numbers, showed 55 new cases, that was just a one-day surge. We want to use the seven-day rolling average of 44 cases to really be the most accurate number. Okay, you now understand all the key concepts. In just a minute, we'll start looking at some real numbers. And later, the numbers get a little scary looking for this guy, who will soon be moving from a county in California, where the epidemic is only somewhat bad, to a county in Washington state where the numbers show the epidemic there is quite a bit more severe. But first, this short break. So it turns out that the folks at the Harvard Global Health Institute have created a really great website with very fresh seven-day rolling average numbers of new COVID-19 cases in not just every one of the 50 United States, but in every one of the over 3,100 counties in the 50 United States. So I can easily compare the severity of the pandemic here in the county where I live now compared to the county that I'm going to be moving to next month. By the way, I think it goes without saying that not only can we compare the counties that interest me, but you can go to this website and compare the counties or the states that interest you. So the numbers here at globalepidemics.org, the website run by the Harvard Global Health Institute, are expressed as the number of new daily cases per 100,000 population on a seven-day rolling average. And that, as I have previously explained, is the right way to accurately analyze the severity of an epidemic. Who knew that these Harvard scientists would be so smart? And to make things super simple, they developed a color coding system to help you quickly spot a place with a minor epidemic versus a place with a major one. The color code works like this. If a place has less than one daily case per 100,000 population on a seven-day rolling average, that's code green, a very safe place to be. Don't even bother wearing a mask. Go to Walmart, dine inside a restaurant. Don't worry, it's code green. Now, if a place has at least one daily case, but less than 10 on a seven-day rolling average, that is a code yellow. Be cautious. There are active COVID-19 cases in the area. Wear a mask anytime you're outside of your own home and mingling with other people, like in the line at Walmart or anywhere that other people are nearby. It's code yellow. If a place has 10 or more new daily cases, but less than 25 on a seven-day rolling average, that is a code orange. Restaurants should be takeout only, no dining in. Places like hairdressers and bars should be completely shut down. There is a really serious epidemic going on here. You need to take this super seriously. That's a code orange. And finally, if the epidemic is just totally out of control, the worst case scenario with greater than 25 new daily cases on a seven day rolling average per 100,000 residents, that's a code red. If you're going out and spending time with other people in a place with code red conditions, you are taking a serious risk with your health and the health of everyone in your family. Face masks are an absolute necessity when you're anywhere out near other people in a code red. The virus is out of control in that area. Code 
red. Okay, now you have a full understanding of what we're about to see on the globalepidemics.org website. Let's look at what's happening out there right now in the United States. If we click this button here that says States, and also make sure that this button here is clicked, which is Map Mode, the data is presented to us in a map format on a statewide level. And with just one quick glance, you can see that the states of Idaho, Nevada, Arizona, Texas, Louisiana, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, and Florida all have a big problem, an out of control, code red situation, at least when you're talking about things on a statewide level. But the real beauty of this website is that you can dive far deeper than the statewide level. You can look at the numbers for any of the over 3,100 counties that make up the United States. I'm going to show you how to do exactly that right after this. Now, let me show you how to dive deeper into the stats at the globalepidemics.org website. And this is the real power of the site, where you can look at the numbers for individual counties, not just the overall statewide numbers. Let's do Florida. If we click over to counties instead of states, you see the map goes into much more detail, showing you that within Florida, some individual counties are in code orange, but a lot of other counties are in code red. And not a single county in the entire state is in code green or even in code yellow. Every county in the state is either orange or red. That is very bad. To put it simply, COVID-19 is just completely out of control in Florida. If you live in Florida, you should be taking this extremely seriously. Now, over on the right side of the page, you can see a list of all the states in order of the severity of the outbreak in those states, as expressed by the number of daily new cases per 100,000 residents on a seven-day rolling average. Florida tops the list right now at a mind-boggling 55.3 daily new cases per 100,000 residents statewide. Now, remember, 25 new daily cases will put you in code red, the worst of the four categories, Florida has more than double the amount it takes to be considered in a code red situation. There's no other way to look at it than to say that the virus is very much out of control in Florida. Yet the Republican governor of Florida has done everything he can to resist imposing stronger measures to get the pandemic under control. Now notice that there is a little plus mark to the left of each of the names of the states. Let's click on the plus mark next to Florida. You can see that list on the right now expands to show every one of the individual counties in Florida. So if you live in Florida and you want to find out how bad the situation really is in the county you live in, that is exactly how you do it. Now remember that this list is in order with the counties with the worst outbreaks at the top. Look at Columbia County. That's in the northeast part of the state along the border of Georgia, 142 new daily cases per capita. That's an incredibly severe outbreak. And second on the list, a place I've vacationed many times in the past, Miami-Dade County with 102 new daily cases per capita. That's more than four times the threshold to be considered a code red. They have just completely failed to control the epidemic there in Miami, they're just not making strong enough restrictions on people being out in public. The area is still wide open to tourists even today. They did just recently impose a curfew in Miami Beach, forcing businesses to shut their doors and forcing tourists to get back inside their hotels, but that only goes into effect at 8 p.m. The entire length of the day Miami Beach is open for tourists, that is just crazy with daily new cases of COVID-19 averaging over 100 for every 100,000 people. And keep in mind, that's a daily number. So in just one week, over 700 new cases for every 100,000 people. In just a month, that would be 3,000 new cases among every 100,000 people. That is just insane. You can scroll down the list of Florida counties and see them all. 
that's an awful lot of counties there in a code red situation. Now, if we go all the way to the bottom of the list, the county in Florida with the least per capita new daily cases is Flagler County, but even they have a seven-day rolling average of 17.9 new cases per capita, a code orange. And that number's up just in the last week from 12 new daily cases. So the bottom line is, no matter where you live in Florida, you've got a serious epidemic all around you. Now, there's one other really interesting way to look at the data here at the globalepidemics.org website, and that is to click away from the map button and onto the tabular button. If you have the states button clicked, it shows you all 50 states ranked in order from the worst, Florida, all the way down to Vermont, currently at the bottom of the list with an average new daily case number of only 1.3 per 100,000 residents. Not a single state in the nation is in a code green situation right now. Even Vermont is a code yellow. And if you click away from the states button and onto the counties button, this is really fascinating. This is a full list of the more than 3,100 counties that make up the United States, and the list is ranked in order of the per capita daily new cases. Scrolling down the list, Wow, that's an awful lot of counties in the code red category, an awful lot of counties with a completely out of control epidemic. And up at the top of the list with the worst outbreak of COVID-19 in the entire United States, it's Scurry County, Texas, with a mind boggling 232 new daily cases per capita. I don't even know what to say. That is so bad. <laughs> Okay, I've now given you all the tools. You can go to the globalepidemics.org website yourself and look up all the places that are of interest to you. And with everything I've told you, you are now fully qualified to make a good judgment for yourself about how bad things are or aren't in the places that you're interested in. Now let's make this about me for a minute and you'll see why the situation with my upcoming move is a little scary. I currently live in San Luis Obispo County, California. So if we click on counties and then map, go to the right side of the screen and scroll down until we see California, then I'll click on the plus sign to the left of California and I'll scroll down that list until I find San Luis Obispo County. There it is. So we're in a code orange at 15.5 new cases per 100,000 residents. Just a week ago, that number was sitting at 10.3, by the way. So just in the last week, the situation has deteriorated a bit. 15.5 new cases per capita is definitely a serious epidemic, but certainly not out of control. Since it's code orange, I always wear a face mask whenever I'm not at home and other people are around. Let's compare that to the situation in the county that I'm going to be moving to at the end of August. So that's Washington State. And notice that on a statewide basis, the number is 11.1. .1. So if we just went by the statewide statistics, we wouldn't be too worried for me at this point. But statewide numbers are almost meaningless. It really comes down to the particular county you live in. I'll be living in Franklin County. So let's expand the list of Washington counties. And oh my God, there it is, almost at the top of the list, a very severe outbreak, a full code red at more than double the criteria for code red status, by the way, 54.9 new daily cases on a seven day rolling average per 100,000 residents. That's where I'm headed at the end of August compared to 15.5 new daily cases where I'm at now. Makes me feel real good about moving there, right? <laughs> well, we are definitely going to wear masks when we introduce ourselves to our new neighbors. Uh, we will stand 10 feet apart from them. And if any of them offer to help me unload the truck with all of our furniture on moving day, I should probably just thank them and tell them I've got it. So there you have it. I'm sorry this turned into such a long video. Part of the problem in this day and age is that people want to simplify everything down to an easily digestible headline or a soundbite. Look, a global pandemic is not simple. It's complicated. You have to take a rational, scientific approach to understand it and deal with it. If you've stuck with me this long through this long video, 
I salute you. You are a rational thinker that is looking to learn and understand. I wish we had those kind of people running the country these days. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today and that you take this information and use it to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. I'm Jim Zim, an old radio guy from the 1970s and 1980s. For the last 22 years, I've been working in the nuclear power industry. I just recently retired, so I have a lot more time on my hands these days. I've been trying to do lots of different types of videos on my YouTube channel lately. If you think it was a good video, share it with your friends on social media and subscribe to my channel.